for talent to show up i could have farmed much better but in the context of focusing on the video well it's not that good okay i'm doing one versus two here don't mind me don't mind me nice Hello everyone, my name is Rumat and today we're going to start a new series in which I will talk about and do guides on different champions than Talia. Now, my channel, my Talia channel will generally go like this. One Talia video, one other champion video, one Talia video, one other champion video and so on. We're going to do likely solo queue Talia plays, we're going to do Grandmaster games with Talia and we're going to do flex against diamond players on other champions. Guides, we will going to do guides. So this is going to be a how to play Pantheon top video. I'm going to show you everything that you need to know in order to see and to play better this champion and to understand this properly. We're doing a very silverish engage but I'm focused on the talking part and so <laughs> I guess that's it. Yeah, I'm gonna recall now because I need to go back to top. Okay, so in these videos, uh, flash, flash, anything. Well, I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna lose lane time, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna discuss in these videos. We're gonna go through everything. We're gonna go through runes, builds best that I think at that time because sometimes you may see the video very late and you're going to be maybe if you see it at the end of season 11 and I make the video at the beginning of the season 11 this guide might not be so optimal but I'm going to go to runes uh, builds that the actual runes and builds that are the most recent ones going to abilities micro macro vision control gonna try to do complete videos and gameplay videos full games and then after the game we're going to do an analysis phase in which we will try to see what we did right what we did wrong how to improve what combos tricks you could do on set champion and yeah this will be one type of video the other type of video will be normal Tulia gameplay or other kind of Tulia state of Tulia videos and write that I, she made level 2 so I have to respect her and we're going to go through everything in a second so runes builds and all of that I need to be careful on farming now Pantheon what exactly is Pantheon it's a champion that has been changed a lot uh, he had the rework uh, he has next patch a great change on his Q but his E will no longer tank turret shots I'm also playing Pantheon, if you can see here I'm playing with press the attack, we're going through runes in a second, but generally they are trying to convert Pantheon from the lane, from the support to lane. They are going to try to do so, and I'm going to actually win this, because she is very greedy. Alright, okay. So, for summoner spells, generally when you play Pantheon top, now that he will be changed to lane, you want to generally play him with uh, Ignite and Flash. That will be your main uh, bread and butter, because Pantheon cannot be played that much with Teleport, because he lacks an ultimate that actually deals damage, so he will have to, you know, he will, you will have to actually uh, be more resourceful. Alright, okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> Man, I outplayed you. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, okay. How do I win this? I'm gonna wait here. I'm gonna wait for my cooldown. Dodge the... Ah, I couldn't dodge that. I had no E. Should have e would My bad. Anyway. We're gonna discuss everything, I'm not sure what I was saying, but let's talk runes first. You can play Pantheon with either Press the Attack or uh, Conqueror or even Electrocute. I generally play with Conqueror, but now I'm trying a build that I think it works. I've seen it on Korea, on the top. It's Press the Attack with Sanguine Blade, Blade of Runed Kings and uh, Eclipse as a mythic item. So we're going to discuss that. I'm going to do alternatives too. So I'm saying you can play with Press the Attack, you can play with Conqueror. I generally play with Conqueror, you can play with both of them but for example press the attack i think is better against something like fiora for example because you need to go in and out in and out and it helps with the burst you can't do longer trades on pantheon you need to do two trades one that gets them to half hp and the second one which gets them dead but if you play with conqueror you can keep the fight going 
when you're ahead that works but uh, most champions most bruisers will eventually beat you so with press the attack you have the uh, burst required to do two two of these engages and you will be reminded that you're not allowed to permanently fight them and you will do more damage with your actives uh, with your uh, items well such as blade of the Rick king and um, with eclipse so that's why i think it's actually stronger right now because it enhances also the damage it says right here from all sources right so that means it will enhance blade of the king which we will talk about in a second it will enhance eclipse and it will help you with your damage also i will have ignite right now okay we're going all in i think i missed that but we have to stay around here and we're likely going to win this Okay, three, two, one. Oh no. Yeah, well, it's fine. We're gonna push that now. It's it's still not the patch where your E cannot block tower shots. It's still we're still not there. So we're gonna push that, and we're going to go through runes right now. So I'm playing with press the attack, as you can see down there, right? Let me just get this, and I'm gonna show you right now. So I'm playing with press the attack, triumph, legend alacrity. This can be okay. I need to push one more if because. I was focused on that. This could be replaced with tenacity, and then going here for cut down. Uh, I should have gone for uh, likely for uh, cup the grace, but generally you could go cut down because most bruisers will eventually have more HP than you. Why? Because they will go for phage, and cut down will actually deal a lot of damage, and this also deals always damage compared to cup the grace. So not only below forty percent or something, right? We're going for vision words boots that we're going to talk items soon for secondary you can go either sudden impact and eyeball collection or you go cup the grace uh, or uh, sorry pre uh, you go for biscuits and time warp tonic or even uh, transcendence and nimbus cloak you have to choose which one fits best i like the sudden impact extra lethality but you could play for other for those others for runes you could go for attack damage and armor magic is based on needs that's that's what you need so that's what, that would be all about runes. Remember, full stack W will hit three attacks. We're going through abilities, but that's the most important thing. Full stack W scales well with conqueror and press the attack because, and by full stack I mean when the bar is full, because you actually deal three auto attacks and will stack your bar fully or will proc instantly conqueror. So that's what it does. Okay, he's level six. He just used E though, so I could do that. He's not gonna. If he also, I can just press the proper E. And I'll be fine. Okay, I missed that. I will jump on him. I will try to go all in because I'm extremely ahead. But I'm not going to telegraph my W. So I'm going to bait the W in. I'm going to make him lose CS. Even though we're quite even. And I'm going to try to go for the kill. See, he loses a lot of CS. We are winning 2 versus 2 likely. I'm gonna need though for Echo to actually deal damage because he doesn't. Yeah, we're gonna lose this. I misplayed greatly. Because I've seen. Oh my god! I got baited. I got so baited. I, I went on the jacks, did nothing, and died because I thought Echo would actually be doing something with his two kills. But well, that's my bad. I should focus more on these trades. So that's the thing that you should be, should be careful about. But you, when you actually do these kinds of fails, you can also have your ultimate. And that's why you play with Ignite. Because you have your ultimate to actually get back to the lane right here, like this. And you can even get the kill. Now, Akali used that. Akali used the, her W and I get the free kill there. And most people at lower elos fail to remember that. And you, sh you could easily abuse it. So again, Conqueror, press the attack. Secondary, you choose between those three options that we stated. And for items, we're going to discuss that right now. But I want to put the vision word down. Don't disregard the fail that I just did. Uh, I'm. You should never actually rely on the jungler. You should be careful with it. Yeah, I'm not afraid of the Jax. But I'm afraid of the Pantheon. So, of the Talon. So if he comes to, I have to, I'll have to run away. But I want to push this into the tower. Okay. Gonna do that. Gonna cast a full, a full spell. But I'm not gonna go all in because I know Akali comes right. And I actually have immediately after one minute, um, one minion. I have my first item. Let's talk build right now. 
the build you generally want to go for and the best on Pantheon right now at the current patch is Blade of the Reed King. I have it here down into boots, either either armor boots or merc shoes, depending on how much CC they have. Into Eclipse, as you can see here, into Sanguine Blade or Tankiness. Pantheon likes a lot this burst and... Did I call it teleport or something? No, I don't, I don't think so. Pantheon likes a lot to... <laughs> to not scale, so to say. And if you want to scale with Pantheon, that will never happen. Basically, Pantheon, unless you win the lane, Pantheon will struggle against most champions because of his bad scalings. And so, we have to either go for a glass cannon build or a split push essential build. What I found is that you can definitely go every single time Blade of Ruined King first, because he's one of the strongest items. I have it up here. I'm just gonna get the cannon probably. Just gonna do a recall, gonna bait her in, and jump, and then, yep. I'm gonna miss that Q. I think I'm gonna let her push it in, gonna get the wave, and then I'm gonna recall, depending on how slow she is. Is, is the wave gonna hit the tower? I'm gonna see now. Yeah, I'm waiting for this wave too. So, the general build should be Blade of Ruined King into something like Eclipse, into something like uh, either Death Dance, Tankiness, or a Sanguine Blade. Definitely get boots somewhere there, but most of the time you'd want she'll probably use it to stop me, right? I hope she gets a tower shot. She didn't. Okay. All right, so we can go for this and we can go for one exactly one Null mantle right here. So again the build uh, You go for start quick corrupting go for blade of Ruined king either boots this boots or merc Eclipse sanguine blade or death dance or torn mail or or Gargoyle Stone Plate. The last one is a situational item, but generally you should get it last or after the rest. Uh, my team is not doing that fine. And as a late game item, that's a good one because you might want sometimes to engage with your ult and that will actually help you a lot into the fights. So yeah. Okay, don't, don't do what I just did here, but look at the burst. All right, look at this general burst. Look at the burst and at the fact that not only I mismanaged to play this, I failed everything in the fight because I was tilting my arse off. But look how strong Pantheon, insanely strong he is. I haven't had to flash. I knew her damage wouldn't be enough to actually kill me. And what I have to do now is to be careful to the actually actual talent, right? Or Jax. So I'm going to hit this tower. That was a bad example of a trade, but I was still focused on the build. It's still pretty good though, we're winning, we're hopefully going to carry this. Gonna get one tower shot to my head. Gonna try to... Okay. I'm gonna let it in a bad state, but I suppose it's fine. Dodge the E. Yeah, she rushed it. She will try to push. I could just easily and slowly move towards this. So I'm going to get Merc Treads. I'm going to click on the Eclipse right here. I'm going to start to build towards it and another Vision Ward. Uh, regarding Vision, try to get at least one Vision Ward every other back. So you'll have at the end of the game four to six uh, Vision Wards planted, which is a lot. And I've noticed that if you destroy your opponent, you have higher chances of actually winning the game compared to when you roam a lot and lose CS. And so I'm going to try to generally focus on playing Pantheon like a major split pusher. She would be stupid to actually return here. But yeah, we have also the sustain from that, which is amazing. I tried to play Pantheon again as a split pusher and as a sort of solo lane focused champion because I really dislike to... She missed that. I really dislike to uh, go to other lanes and try to help them and to lose then that because AD carry is hard to scale. But if you help your mid laner or your jungler, that's actually great. Okay, what is this? I'm gonna lose that. Uh, yeah, that was a lot of Janna help. But I suppose we get bot tower here? Should. Definitely didn't expect... They pinged me, I should have uh, reacted to the ping. Uh, but that was a misplay from my part. I could have actually outplayed them both, I suppose. But yeah, we talked items, we talked runes. 
I died three times already, a bit too much, but this game doesn't really go into our favor, so we need to carry it. So, whenever the game doesn't go into your favor, you could actually opt for going bot, for ganking, for roaming. Uh, at the current point, I need to kill Ezreal or to stop Jax from doing Jax things. I also need to farm, but once I get uh, Eclipse, I will be even more strong. I, I could probably get away with one more kill on her or just the tower, and then I could start moving to do a roam. What is she doing? So, Pantheon works on a five point system. As you can see, there are five slots, five stacks. That's his passive. Every five spells or attacks, his bar goes red. He has enhanced effects on his skills. His ultimate right now, uh, I see Jax in our jungle. His ultimate right now throws uh, the spear somewhere and you jump, just like a Twisted Fate ult. Uh, but in next patch, it will also the, the sword that this spear that you throw will also provide some minor vision, which is good. Uh, some uh, sorry, some uh, slow if you hit it. So that's a buff. His Q will be changed. His Q will have lower cooldown. Right now, you can either tap the Q or hold the Q. If you hold the Q, it has double the cooldown, so an insanely big cooldown with of uh, eight seconds. It will be seven seconds or something after the buffs. But look at that! <laughs> I really wanted to test the burst, that's why I, <laughs> I knew I had no bounty and my team was close. You could actually get this. Man, why are you... He was scared of the Talon with his entire team there. I, I wanted to test the burst there, that's why I went and in, I went full kamikaze. But yeah, for abilities, your Q has half of the cooldown if you just tap it. Half of the cooldown and even execute damage. Look, we're winning. That's amazing. I also have the jump now. So I'm gonna ping that Akali is coming, pretty much clear that she's going to mid. Okay, be careful. But we are starting to win this game, pretty much clear that, that's pretty good. I think that's... Okay, I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna get... Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. A bit too many champions for us. Wanted to get the talent, but... Look at the burst, man. Look at that. Come on, jump. Congrats. Freaking congrats, the jump. I have an invincibility spell. So, you can either tap and throw it, or you can... Uh, you can hold and throw it and tap it simply, that's the Q. Basically, as you can see, deals an additional 2274 damage, slows the target, that's when your bar is full. So, your Q is strongest when your bar is full. Your W does the mini stun, and when you have it the bar full, it does three attacks. That Those three attacks are the enablers of the press the attack, or conquer, or even, I think, electrocute, I'm not sure, It's it's gotta be separate attacks on electrocute. But generally, generally the W is used when you have your bar full, to do procs of Blade of Runic King, procs of uh, of uh, the uh, press the attack, and stuff like that. So you could definitely use that to your advantage. Look, I'm already a full level ahead. Alright. Alright. As you can see, I am playing the wave, right? I'm not uh, forcing stuff, I'm trying to be smart about it. Okay. Ah, she had flash. I was trying to be smart about it, but I I obviously limit testing a lot with this and anything, but I'm doing my part here. Okay. Uh, that was a fail. She has no ult, though. Yeah, Echo could perhaps perform, but I could definitely perform a lot better. But I hope you don't die here, because... Get out. Oh, man. That's it. Anyway. W does the mini stun that we talked, and you should generally do W into auto attacks, into Q, into an E. E blocks damage from towers. That's this patch. Next patch it won't in uh, December of 2020. And you should know that. You should be careful with that. I could actually sell here this to get Eclipse. That's very important. Remember to notice that when it's happening. I could definitely start roaming now. I see Akali is not here, but I don't think I have to. So I'm thinking that she's uh, missing, but I don't think I have to because they are patting towards this and they have already a pretty good engage, but they should back off after the fight. I also have here a pretty big wave. 
Uh, okay, they have, they got that. So I could expect likely for Talon to show up. I could have farmed much better, but in the context of focusing on the video, well, it's not that good. Okay, I'm doing one versus two here. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Nice. Don't mind me, guys. That's the power level of Pantheon. Of fed, pretty fed Pantheon. I missed the cannon. So yeah, use E to block damage when you think the vast majority of damage will come. So that was the Talon jump. Talon ult into W into jump into Akali spells. But next patch, it won't block tower shots, so you gotta be careful to that. So you won't block tower shots with your E. But you can press E twice, so press it once to block damage, and press it again to deal damage, because E, most people don't know that, the last hit of E also deals extra damage. So I'm gonna let him use his... Uh... <laughs> Hi. <laughs> That's the burst of Pantheon. That's what makes Pantheon great, and I think going for something like, uh, I think going for something like uh, Sanguine Blade next would just make me more stronger. But remember the active of Sanguine Blade. Okay, that went well. Bye. I think he's dead. Yep. But I'm fine word here and I'm gonna recall into a very odd position okay jump she cast it alt okay I need to get away from the talon so I'm gonna jump here yep talon is still chasing me so I need to back off to a point use Q simply and I need to back off to a point where he I, I, would, I could definitely kill him I don't think Akali expects me here in this bush. So just look at the burst. She will come here close to this and I will just instantly gut her. So yeah, the E is used to either deal burst or to block damage, mostly to block damage. So that's the main thing that you gotta do. Oops, I'm an idiot. But the opponents should know when you use the Q like that. When you throw it, the opponents should know that they have a window of four seconds when you can't do of six seconds when you can't do anything. So remember to not throw off th throw the Q and then keep fighting. If you throw the Q, you either throw it to execute or to poke. But when you have your Q on cooldown, the big Q, I, I speak about the throwable Q, you have to back off. You have to be careful. Because you don't have your small Q. Small Q is the tap Q, right? So you have to play this constant game of understanding when you have it and when you don't. I'm going for extra stuff. So, again, you throw the Q, you, you press the Q, you have 4 seconds. You throw it, it's an 8 second. So in those 8 seconds, you don't do lots of trades or fights. Why is Mokai hinting there? Basically, you want to stack up the bar. We talked all the abilities now, I think. You want to stack up the bar or to use you to instantly, to instantly have it stacked by the ult itself. Nice. Nice. Oh my god, she really missed that ult. <laughs> the burst is insane, man. I'm so enjoying this. So we talked... Why are they flaming each other? We talked about runes, builds, abilities. The combo part is that you want to do this... Uh, this full burst by the fully stacked W. You want to do the fully stacked W, proccing the blade of Rune Kingdom, proccing the auto attack from Eclipse, the proccing the press the attack, the sudden impact, all the stuff that helps. And after that, after you jump with W, you want to do something like auto attack, auto attack Q or Q into full E. You got a lot of combos possible that you need to, treat, to try and to see into the practice tool. And I'm gonna want to see the assassination speed i'm 15 level 15 the highest in the game right now by a large large margin but i want to test how fast i can assassinate someone uh let's say akali comes i expect akali to come around here anytime soon right and oh wait 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 that's a one shot almost. and theoretically it's, it's three shots but that's in one second the whole burst it's faster than talia like that's insane 
And that's before the actual Q buffs. But again, Pantheon doesn't scale, so you're going to struggle a lot against the mid-game Fiora. You're going to struggle a lot against uh, Renekton on lane, likely. You're going to... If you don't play the matchup good, you're going to struggle against Darius, against Camille's. Good players at highest Telos in Challenger will definitely destroy a Pantheon because he has no scaling. So... I really enjoy not taking damage with my E. It's one of the few champions who has invincibility, invincibility. What the only champion who has invincibility on a basic ability, which is what makes Pantheon quite strong. And I'm quite happy that they move him from the from the support role back to lane, to be honest, because he is very strong. All right. So I'm pretty much fed, but you can see the farm is not that well, that good. I didn't even roam early. I just focused on destroying the opponents. And then destroying one versus two and doing this sort of stuff. And I could jump here. This is a good spot to jump. Even though Talon will jump probably away. Probably be there. Okay, he actually... Okay, go, 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 go. He actually went in. That's insane. Now, now we are having this for free. I thought we don't, but... Apparently Talon gave it us. So in terms of macro, you're going to always... In micro and macro, you're going to always have a decision to make. The decision between trying to kill the opponent on lane or actually trying to ditch the lane to actually roam early. So, let's say you're against a Malphite who literally stacks armor and AFKs under the tower. Let's say he does that. Well, in that context, you'd want to actually try to roam early. Maybe do an early level gank on mid if you're not allowed to scale. Uh, definitely played with the same items because these items are quite against tanks. Or you can go for Divine Sunderer, but I don't enjoy it that much. I'm not gonna flash here for that. Okay, I'm gonna flash. You see the instant E. E and instant pressed again. We're going for soul now. Their jungler is dead. We can only lose it to what? To the Ezreal? But I'm not gonna even try to spirit. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hello. Okay. We also seen him jumping in for. I think Jana abandoned him or something. <laughs> Alright. So we talked about the combo. So again, on micro and macro, you're going to have that decision to make. I'm a dumb player. <laughs> going to think if it's worth to roam or not. Most of the time, it won't be because Pantheon can kill people on lane. But after level 6, your ultimate actually opens up the bot lane, the mid lane, when you recall. But remember, you don't have teleport. So when you do the bot gank, top mid gank, the enemy top laner either follows, which you have to consider if he has teleport up or not, or... He will take a lot of plates and then you gotta consider that you gotta see how that works uh also sanguine blade as you know uh, as it states here while near one or fewer visible champions so around you so this item doesn't work into multiple champions like this and again talon is doing this mistake as you can see here and i can just Ah, the exhaust! This, this this is what kills me, the exhaust. But then again, we're, lose, we're winning on mid. I'm doing a 1 versus 3 here. My team is <laughs> destroying them elsewhere. So it's fine. But you can see how strong that is. I lost only because Jana exhausted me twice. Both times she exhausted me. And that's why you can't really do much against it. Wow. Wow, that burst. Also remember to get Thornmail when you're against Yumi. But third... After Eclipse and uh, Blade of Runic King, or after the Blade of Runic King and whatever mythic you choose. On the discussion of mythics, you can go for for many mythics. You can actually go for Prowler's Claw to get closer to them. You can go for Divine Sunder against Tank. If you need a tank, maybe you can go even Aegis, but it's going to get over nerfed. You can go Eclipse, Gordon Card, I don't like it that much. Tractar, it's good, but I, don't, I think there are better options. But right now, Eclipse is the general one. So again, you gotta pick the proper build, but this one is probably the best in slot. I'm not sure about Sanguine Blade that much. Uh, depending, it depends on a lot of context. If the enemy stuck up, this is going to be useless, so you have to stay to the side lane, obviously. If you don't know how to stay to the side lane, picking this will be just make you bad. And worse, because the passive doesn't act, activate, so the passive, that sounds so wrong. But yeah, I'm gonna cast ult here and try to end the game. So, again, on Pantheon, the micro part, learning the ability is pretty simple. Learning the matchup is not that difficult because you're very strong early on. 
but learning when to alt, how to generally move around the map, stuff like that, it's what makes the champion actually difficult. Winning the game, scaling properly, not giving a thousand gold bounty. Those are things that actually make you understand how to play the champion better. But these are the difficult things that you need to learn. And it's doable, guys. We won the game here. It's doable. And I want to take now some minutes to talk about analysis and how we could improve our plan, our Pantheon playstyle. And this is going to be for every video in this series like that. So let's say in three in two videos or three videos, we're going to do a Garen fight of video or something else. This will be sort of the same, the structure of the video. So we're going to try to discuss all of this same stuff, right? So let's uh, let's recap a bit. We discussed runes, builds, abilities, sort of combos. Combos, you can practice them and learn them into the practice tool. I haven't got any honors for this. I got, I dealt the most damage by a large margin. By a very large margin. I probably, probably dealt more damage than any other two teammates combined. Anyway. Not important. The, the important thing is understanding how to actually play this champion better. So, uh, in the post game talk, we're going to discuss just that. So, we talked about it, everything you need to know. You need to make some choices. That's the first thing. So, runes, you need to choose the rune between Conqueror and President Legacy, whichever fits best. You need to choose between secondaries because you have three options of secondaries either inspiration, uh, sorcery, or the domination tree so we talk that uh, you have to choose between that you have to r use runes properly you have to itemize properly you got to go for blade because that's the best in slot you got to see and get up to date to the latest item changes because they are going to change over this season right you got to make the blade you got to make a mythic you got to make proper boots sometimes you have to go for tormail because they have lots of heals such as yumi vlad soraka stuff like that uh, you got to have uh, proper usage of this by using a full stack W so you proc this stuff by using uh, proper ease into their bursts of damage by using proper ultimates not too far not too close you have to understand how to use your abilities so that works with practice in normals or flex and practice tool you have to try and practice through lots of combos to get used to it and then you gotta start micro part the micro part the matchups so you have to be careful against the matchups against you have to be careful against Fioras, you have to be careful against Jax players, Camilles, Renektons, Malphite stacking, armor stacking champions because they outscale you regardless. So Malphite will destroy you eventually if you're not getting ahead early. And you can get ahead early if either you micro outplay him and if you can't, because he's someone plays very defensive. You have to understand how to roll. Besides that, you have to understand when. Uh, the enemy jungler will gank you because you play with ignite and before level 6 you don't have the teleport so you don't do the noob proof oh my god I died I teleport back I'm gonna be fine you don't have that you don't have that so if you don't have that it means you have to play more smart against the macro part because you know by the macro part you need to understand when the jungler will come when the enemy jungler will gank you at level 3 at level 2 at level 4 so if you're against the noon you have to expect level 2 ganks or 3 ganks if you're against the shake or same so those cheeses if you're against uh, something that who can beat you early i advise you to ban it that set he can most likely beat you every single time if you're not getting early help from the jungler <sighs> so you have to try to be careful against these difficult matchups that's what you gotta do you gotta see that in difficult matchups you have to play in a certain way until you get your certain power spikes or the gank and if you're getting ganked by the enemy jungler you have to not die or if you get ahead you have to not give the bounty because Pantheon doesn't scale you, don't get the luxury of inting the whole game as like a Fiora and then having the minute 40 power spike where you are 0-12 and you still do, do things, You're, it's not going to work like that. Because Pantheon is strong early and Pantheon scales only if you are ahead in terms of creating pressure early. Either you lose your own lane between two other lanes with ganks or you win your lane hard and don't die to ganks and even uh, help your jungler win the the jungle fights two versus twos you gotta be careful i did a fail in this game against the jacks i did my whole combo into the jack c if you do that you're gonna struggle you're gonna struggle with that so you gotta uh, take your time and 
gotta practice, gonna take some games. Again, I'm doing these games against diamond players in flex, in Raptor Deaconist. It's not the Grandmaster that I'm showcasing in my solo games in my uh, Raptor Deaconist games on Talia. But these videos are enough to showcase how to play better because most of the population is actually at around gold, platinum, or even silver level. So seeing this closer to their level and seeing how someone plays in that elo actually helps to understand what you gotta do and how you expect your teammates to react accordingly. Because if I'm playing Grandmaster, my teammates will react much better than the silver teammates of someone who's silver. So this could be a good argument of why playing this at this flex level. And it's not a Smurf account. This is on flex. I generally try things out. So that's why I'm not so high elo on flex. I haven't even played that much flex. So that's, that's another reason. I have a very good matchmaking rating here. So I gain two plus 25 per game. So making these videos, I'm also going to play against better players and better players because I'm doing them in flex and not in solo queue. That's another reason. I think we go, we went to all. I think it's a pretty long video already, but as a guide, as a standalone guide, I think this is all you need to know to start playing properly as a beginner or even an intermediate player to start playing this champion and the next champions that I'm going to showcase you. I'm going to try to find always the best builds and the best runes that work. So I'm not going to do bullshit uh, AP, I don't know, Darius, random build, I this build carried my game stuff against bronze players no i'm not gonna try to do that i'm actually going to try to find the best build at the time and the best runes at the time of the video and i'm going to try to display it and some tricks of the champion some combos some to do how to play in what matchups how to be more careful i also have a pretty good knowledge of general mid lane and top lane champions because i've played a lot i also played a lot of support at some certain points so i did some bard some blitz some lulu i could definitely go for more champions and i'm trying my best to display the best of things and the best of content i hope this helps i hope you think it's decent quality i hope uh you like this in general and i'm thankful for having such a nice community and player base and uh, join our discord as well we have a pretty good nice community we talked stuff <laughs> and yeah any questions i also answer there or on youtube and try to message me wherever I'm trying to keep all of the comments and to answer the questions as often as I can doing my best uh, but if they will get more and more I'm gonna try to I don't know select some of them or do my work and answer all I will see on discord I'm more reachable though on my uh, discord so you could or my uh, my uh, friends from discord could also help you with Leah related questions other champs questions so yeah so that's all that's all that's the guy that's that's all you get <laughs> that's all you get <laughs> i'm i'm glad to have this to do youtube and i love this thing and yeah see you next time guys have a nice and wonderful week ahead month year let's hope you all go through everything together we go strong ahead and that <laughs> we go strong at it and we go we do good at it <laughs> see you next time guys goodbye